Thank you very much, Victor. So uh, moving quickly along to the next session where we will be talking a little bit about, we will be hearing from a few people who are actually working with the climate student movement. And they will be talking a little bit about how we as a movement work and what has worked for us. So uh, with no further ado, let's start where it all began and hear from our founder and the chairperson of the International Climate Students Movement, Ruth Maria Sundström. Take it away. Thank you, Adam. Um, and thank you, Nadia and Marie-Claire. Um, uh, yes, I will start the presentation. So many windows. Uh, sorry. Um, the uh, climate student movement, uh, as I told you in the beginning, uh, was founded in Uppsala, Sweden, uh, three years ago uh, by students at the Swedish University of Agricultural Sciences. And the idea came from uh, Kevin Anderson, a climate leader professor. Uh, he told us that students have the power to impact our universities and college to stop their emissions in line with climate science and the Paris Agreement. It is crucial uh, that the institutions that are producing climate science lead by example and practice what they teach as students. And no, sorry, just a uh, quick, I think we're seeing the wrong window. We're not seeing the presentation. We're still seeing the Google Chrome, just so you know. You might need to reshare the screen. Okay. Just to see the right one, possibly. Thank you, Adam. <laughs> Is this correct now? Yeah, nah, there we go. Go okay. ahead, sorry. Thank you. Um, is it wrong now? Yeah, now it's wrong again. Okay, because I want to see my text, that's why. Ah. Uh, okay, so maybe Adam, can you share uh, instead? Yes. We're trying to be on time and now it will not be on time. So this is, <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay thank is this you. Uh, right? Yeah. Uh, you can go to next. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so where, where was I? Um, okay, so uh, the uh, industrial countries, um, they must take equity into account, uh, as we talked about, and they cannot rely on negative emission technologies that do not exist. Uh, and when we started our movement, uh, the science showed that industrial countries needed to half their emissions by the end of 2022, starting 2027. Um, so that, uh, 17, I mean, uh, so that became our goal for what universities and colleges also had to do in Sweden. Um, but we early understood that our universities and colleges unfortunately follow the national politics rather than their own produced science. And the Swedish government's goal is to have zero emissions by at least the year 2045. Um, and that is more than uh, 15 years behind to what has to be done um, according to what we know today. And, and, uh, with science, it can show that we actually need to um, reduce it even quicker. Um, so uh, we need to update our goals um, according to the science. Uh, and um, because of this uh, emergency and that, um, yeah, what has to done is not happening, uh, we students need to raise our voices uh, and to use our power to impact the universities and colleges. Uh, to change into a rapid uh, transition so they can be the leading example. Uh, and that process uh, has to be focused on uh, strategic actions uh, that change both the structure and the behaviors. And uh, Leonie Tidlund, uh, she will talk more about that soon uh, from, from the Swedish perspective. Um, and um, uh, we will also listen to three local groups uh, from Sweden. Um, we have made uh, a lot of impact already in Sweden. Um, and uh, we know that 
uh, it is different context in your uh, country um, and that you uh, participating uh, or already are working a lot um, in your countries uh, and we hope that we can learn from each other and become stronger together with this global movement uh, because already from the beginning uh, we had the ambition to become an international movement and we had a working group um, in, under the Swedish National Board uh, and this year they started to gathering students from universities in the Nordic countries and um, then the corona pandemic crisis uh, came uh, and everything went uh, digital so we uh, decided to have a digital international network meetings uh, mobilizing to become a global movement and uh, after uh, two meetings this spring uh, we had became a group of six international coordinators and you have met <laughs> um, almost every one of them um, is me Adam and Victor from Sweden uh, Isha from Singapore and uh, Lucy from UK and Kibet from Kenya and we uh, decided in a discussion with the Swedish board uh, to found an international association and had this uh, founding meeting in August. And this uh, new association uh, gave us a formal structure uh, with statues that makes it more clear who we are, what we want and how we uh, would like to do it. And now you can change slide. And our overall goals uh, with this international association, uh, I had already been talking a bit about it. Um, we uh, will make higher education institutions practice what they teach us about climate science. Um, we will uh, be the global platform for this rapid transition uh, where they immediately stop the greenhouse gas em emissions where it's possible. Uh, in line with equity and that negative emission technologies does not exist. And we also want them to support negative emission projects that works. And this is to make sure that we stay below 5.5 degree global temperature rise and that we continue to go even lower uh, to safeguard our future. And next slide. Um, our core values uh, is that all students are welcome, uh, regardless of gender, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, nationalities, age, et ethnicities, religion, physical or psychological functions, and socioeconomic and academic backgrounds. And uh, in our movement, we do not tolerate any discrimination, harassment, and uh, violence. And uh, we strive for sustainable engagement by respecting each a student's respective level of engagement, energy and time. And our decision making processes are based upon transparent and democratic processes. So this is all in our statutes. And next, um, the main uh, operation of our international association uh, are about strengthening our member organizations uh, skills, knowledges, tools, uh, equipment and other resources uh, needed to push higher education institutions and to mobilize and support uh, students to start up new climate students groups locally and climate students organizations nationally and to coordinate and facilitate international campaigns for the development of students climate action papers and to organize international network meetings like this one and uh, even bigger conferences uh, for member organizations and uh, other students groups initiatives and uh, organizations who would like to be involved um, so uh, in our closure session uh, adam will uh, talk about our coming events that we have planned so far uh, so we hope that you will stay um, until the end and um, next slide um yes i would like to say something more about um, our one of our campaign that we have uh, and it's called ideas for action and uh, with this campaign uh, we uh, cooperate with a, a global climate platform called we don't have time uh, we use their digital tool uh, to collect students ideas for action and this uh, ideas is collected during digital climate students uh, hackathons events that we can uh, facilitate uh, or help you facilitate 
And uh, then we uh, make a draft and have a refill around and rewrite and present the final version of the action paper. And uh, uh, the action paper is, um, uh, yeah, can have, uh, for example, areas such as leadership, measurement, ranking, uh, investments, education research, travel, energy, um, and food systems, to mention some of them. Um, and um, yeah, um, we think that the action papers makes it um, more clear uh, what the universities and colleges uh, have to do and how, uh, how they uh, can do it and what the voice of the students are. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, I just want to say that you can uh, write, read more about this on our web page, um, how to take action in, in our movement. And uh, we will also, of course, like to learn more uh, about how um, other organizations uh, are uh, pushing universities and colleges. Uh, so please uh, get in contact with us and uh, let us have a meeting about it. <laughs> and see how we can become stronger together. And uh, I just want to show the last slide uh, with our two uh, hashtags that we uh, use uh, today. Uh, so it's uh, to summarize, it's about uh, using our power as students uh, to impact higher education institutions uh, with the demand practice what you teach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rosemary. And so uh, I, we got a, a question in the chat during this about if the climate students movement, <laughs> if it's registered in our origin country. And the short answer to that is that, yes, we are registered in Sweden, but we operate internationally. Uh, and that's because Sweden has very loose uh, organizational laws. So it's pretty easy to do it that way. So uh, let's move along, as Rosemary mentioned, to some more hands-on approaches. Uh, and uh, let's listen to our Swedish climate student representative, uh, Leonie Tidlund. Welcome uh, aboard. Thank you, Adam, and thank you, Rosemary. Um, my name is Leonie Tidlund, and I'm in the National Board of Climate Students Sweden. And I will be talking about how we have impacted leaders of higher education institutions in Sweden and how climate students went from a seed of an idea uh, with Rosemary and me until the organization that we are today. Um, we are currently 16 local groups in Sweden and there are a couple more on the startup and uh, the local level is where the core of the impact is happening. Uh, what I want you to take with you is that the universities care about what their students think. And even if you're just a couple of people, the, they will see you as a representative for a movement. And here petitions are very important. So I, in local groups, when they've had a petition and they talk to the employers, they will listen to you, even if you're just like a few active students at your university. We've had good contact with universities throughout the years. Uh, usually employers want to talk to us, uh, especially the env environmental strategists or what, the, what their title is, but the ones who worked with the university's climate impact. Uh, they often see us as an ally to their work and uh, someone who can validate their work. Um, we, um, and by finding these allies, also researchers are very good allies to have and by finding them, uh, we have been able to get into the arenas where we have an impact on the climate action of the higher education institutions. We've also had a lot of media coverage and articles uh, during these two years at both a local and national level. This puts pressure on the universities to act because it puts their climate action in the light of the public. And don't be afraid to talk to your local journalist uh, because they're often very happy to write about us and I can assure you that the principal of the university are reading the local newspaper, like they will know what we've done. As Rosemary mentioned, we have had two national conferences. Here is where we get together and raise the energy and have fun and celebrate all of our successes. Here is also where we share tools and learn from each other and where we get the energy to keep going throughout 
the year. Uh, this year, we also did a climate action ranking, which is a, basically a tool where, where we rank the university according to their climate action. This is a very good and visual tool to show what universities practice, what they teach. And we try to get this out to uh, the future students, the people who are appli app doing applications to the universities in order to say like students care about what the university climate impact is and therefore universities have to take climate action to be able to get students in the future. This will let the universities know that we are watching them and we are following up on their climate action. Another tool for impact is that we've had a meeting with the Minister of Higher Education and Research in Sweden, Matilda Annikatz. So most uh, Swedish universities are governed by the state and each year uh, the state gives out, uh, uh, the, the, like they explain their mission, it's called an appropriation direction. So we met with the minister in 2019 uh, to encourage her to write that they have to increase their emissions. We didn't really get that far, but in the appropriation direction for 2020, it said that the universities have to act according to sustainable development and according to the agenda 2030. This means that the universities can't just say that we, we teach, it's, it's enough, but they actually have to act according to the sustainable development. And uh, Matilda mentioned us in an interview saying that climate students are an important blowtorch to get to the transition. And uh, we're going to have another meeting with her in November for next year's appropriation direction. And what's really, really cool is that when we reach out to the Minister of Higher Education and Research, we don't have to explain who we are. We don't have to explain about climate students because she already knows us. So we have gotten really far in only two years. And what I want you to take with you is that we have such a huge impact. So this is at a national level, I can see all of the collective work of each local group. And it's really impressive how much we have done. You might not be that many, like we may not be that many to be honest, but by making our voices heard, people really listen to us. So the universities care about what their students think and by acting at our universities, we have the power to encourage and pressure them to act on their science and be able to make them act and practice what they teach. And when the universities have made that transition, that, that transition and showed the way the rest of society will follow and that people is how you save the world. And uh, we become a successful movement in such a short time. And now we want to grow more. We want to uh, work together with you internationally. We want to have fun and have an impact. Thank you for listening. Thank you as well, Leonie, for that very powerful message. And it's, uh, it's really clear that you guys have definitely made a huge impact, as you said, here in Sweden, which is incredible. Uh, before we move on, just a quick uh, reminder for everyone who hasn't done so that please change your name uh, to your, your name uh, in Zoom so that we know who you are. You can do that easily by right clicking your own video and then clicking rename. So let's move on to the more local level then. How does this look? at specific universities. So we're gonna be hearing from a few different students from different universities who will talk very quickly a few minutes about what they have been doing. And uh, why don't we start at the first university who ever had a climate student, uh, the Swedish University for Agricultural Sciences. So I'll leave the word over to Elin Lundberg. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, my name is Elin. Uh, and I study at the Swedish University of Agriculture, and I'm active in their local group. Um, so before this, I just talked to my group and asked, okay, so I'm going to talk to this uh, international movement. What, are, what should I say? Uh, why have we been successful? Uh, and they came up with like three things, mainly. Um, and so the first thing they said when we started up that was key for the SLU group in the beginning was having a name rally. Um, 
And that, that was, we wrote a letter to the university asking them to commit to be emission-free by 2030, uh, and then asking students and employees to sign it. This, however, the university did not sign it, but uh, it rendered a bit over a thousand signatures. Uh, and most importantly, it really got the attention of other students who realized that they were interested in joining us, uh, but also the attention from employees and the management uh, of the university. Uh, and that really helped us get our name out, making them know that we, we care uh, and they should listen to us. Um, and the one thing, like the one thing that came up multiple times was if you are recruiting people and you're like standing in the hallways talking about, okay, so this is what, who we are, this is what we do, give out coffee. A free cup of coffee will drastically increase your success rate because everyone is more keen to talk to you if you give, give them something and coffee is great, right? Uh, so that's the number one. And the number two is um, the big part of how we achieve the most concrete success uh, at our university is just inviting ourselves into meetings and important uh, talks. Uh, so for example, we were checking documents like uh, guidelines and um, just policies that the university has had. And we realized that a date for renewing the travel guides guidelines were coming up. Uh, so we just emailed them in person and asked, uh, we want to be a part of this. Uh, we want to give our suggestions to the new guidelines. Uh, and they said, yeah, they're like, sure, uh, we'll listen to you. Um, so just by inviting ourselves, we became a part of that whole process, uh, which is not done yet, but we are still uh, getting like regular updates and are on the email list for those decisions, which is great. Um, and then the third and the last thing that I have found really helpful was that we connected with other groups at our university that in our case, thankfully already existed. Um, for example, we have an environmental group that's uh, active at our union. And also we have a group of employees uh, containing of researchers and professors and so on, everyone working like staff. And that really helped both like giving us an extra set of hands when doing something bigger. For example, now for, for the 25th, for the Global Climate Action Day, uh, together with the, the staff group, we made a shoe demonstration, uh, very COVID safe and everything uh, that went well. And we managed to get some, uh, uh, some interviews with some researchers uh, because they are in the group. They are also interested in making our university uh, practice what they teach because uh, they are the ones giving out the research. So I think that's my, maybe the last thing I want to say is just make sure that you are using the resources at your university. Because um, even though the scientists, <laughs> they, they seem to be very busy, uh, but they often love it when someone is interested in their work. Uh, they're all nerds in some way, you know, uh, and they will all, most of the time just try to help in any way they can. Uh, so make sure that you don't forget to use the resources, which are the scientists, of course. Great. Thank you very much, Elin, uh, for those very useful tips. Um, we're, let's move on quickly to uh, the uh, second university to join the climate students movement, uh, Uppsala University. Uh, so I'll leave the word over to Amanda Rensmo from Uppsala. Please take the stage. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Amanda Rensmo and I was the co-chair of our chapter uh, last year. So I will go through some history of our group and uh, then discuss throughout the history, some actions that we've done. So maybe uh, those can be applied at your institution too. So just to provide some examples. Uh, yes, yeah, so as Adam said, uh, we started right after um, the SLU group that's also in Uppsala. Uh, and the first year, uh, it consisted of a small amount of people who uh, focused on uh, 
also organizing a petition and getting signatures for the university to reduce their emissions. And then the second year, uh, the school year of 2019-2020, uh, the group expanded a lot with about uh, 30 members and a lot of active um, people at our events. So in the beginning of that year, we had a, a manifestation outside of the administration office, also with employees. And then there were about, it drew a, attention from the uh, media and there were uh, a lot of people there uh, more than like our group and some of the employees but other people who were just interested in the university's uh, climate work uh, and then after that we walked down um, downtown to join the Fridays for Future manifestation um, so that really started off our year at uh, that time. And um, we started doing the influencing work. So some of us were a part of one of the student unions um, climate committee uh, initiative. Uh, and through that, we got in contact with the uh, environmental manager of the university and with that we collaborated so that we had some workshops for students to come with their ideas for the university because the university was revising their environmental plan at that point so we could provide with them with some insights from students and a follow-up on that this year is that it has now been written so they sent it to us and we're gonna uh, look over it and come with uh, thoughts on um, their work there. Um, and after that, uh, some other lobbying work is that we, there will be a new vice chancellor. So we really pushed for someone who uh, would do a lot in times, uh, in terms of uh, uh, reducing the university's carbon emissions. Uh, and another part of our work is also in writing articles, both by ourselves, but also with um, other uh, groups. So they've been on national, local, and in student newspapers. Uh, and I think one awesome thing is through all of this, it's sometimes hard to see that you're succeeding in your work, but we were really, really happy when we saw that our university had a climate pot of about 2 million uh, Swedish crowns, which is a lot of money, uh, where initiatives that will reduce uh, carbon emissions are um, asked to send in their applications. Um, and I do believe that that was a part of our pushing the university. Uh, even though it sometimes can see that they're not willing to listen to us. But all of that, it's not possible if we don't do fun things together throughout. So I just want to end and say that um, I think what has made our group so active the last year and following up this year is that we have done uh, uh, organized a lot of uh, social events where we meet up at the student pubs. We had uh, Lucia Fika, a very Swedish thing, <laughs> Lucia and Fika, uh, where we just hang out before Christmas uh, and then uh, uh, just uh, social activities with quizzes and fun um, interactive things. Um, yeah, that's it for Sara. Excellent. Thank you very much, Amanda. <clears throat> um, so uh, let's, uh, time's running away from us. So let's uh, quickly move on to our third local group who wants to talk to us about what they've been doing. So I'll uh, leave the floor here for Sigurd Andersson from Lund University. Very welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, so hi, my name is Sigurd Andersson. And I'm a part of the board here 
of the Climate Student Group here in Lund. Um, and firstly, I can just say that I really agree with the, the great tips and suggestions from the other groups, so in Uppsala and SLU. And I'm also glad to be here today and to share some quick information from our group. Um, so firstly, here in Lund, we have a board of eight members and we meet uh, weekly to have like week meetings. Uh, in this board, I have the responsibility to be in contact with the national board of the climate students and also locally with our student unions. Um, when we thought about something that has like had a positive effect here on the university, uh, I imme immediately came to think of uh, a student petition, which we had. It was called Klimat Uppropet or Climate Call Lund, and it took place in the spring of 2019. There, like the main demand of the petition um, was that the university should reduce their emissions by 50% in four years, which also has been the goal and demand of the climate students. Uh, the petition almost collected 5,000 signatures from students. Um, so I really think that you can say that it united the voices of many students and showed that we together as a collective want to see ambitious climate work from the university. Um, then like to talk about results from the petition, um, it was the starting point for the local climate student group here in Lund. Um, also, from the inside, we have gotten information like from staff, from employees working at the university um, that this petition has made like a big impact on the way they talk about uh, climate and the way they work with the issue in the university. And we also now know that it has made a big impact on the upcoming sustainability plan for the university where they will set goals and actions plan on how to advance in the climate area. So to summarize this, I really think it's important to try to like unite the voices of the students behind specific demands, which you can do with a, a petition and to show that we care um, that the university plays their part in fighting climate change and the climate crisis. Um, and if I can just like add one tip, I also think it's really important to try to understand how your local organization, your local like um, university institution, how it works and how you can have an impact. So it can be, for example, coming in contact with the leaders of the university, the board, researchers, as like uh, speakers before have said, it can be employees, staff working with sustainability or student unions. So try to find your own ways um, of having an impact and finding your own channels. Um, yeah, I think that was my point. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you very much, Sigurd. Uh, we're uh always super interested to hear about you guys who have been so successful with this and to hear about what's worked for you so that everyone doesn't have to rebuild the wheel every time they want to start up a new organization. So thank you, that was very valuable.